you can have basically home cloud computing in 60 seconds. No That's setup and, and really, really basic, easy setup. How do I access those files? Yeah, so um, you could access from any computer. So after that initial setup, uh, you're going to go to mypogoplug.com. You're going to have a login ID, and then you're going to have a password. So the best way to describe it is it's exactly like email. You could go to any computer, log in uh, by going to my.pogoplug.com, uh, which is an open site. You could go there right now, and you would see a username spot, which is going to be your email address, and then a password. Right. Once you've done that, you're launched into our browser interface. So again, there is no software download. Now, on your computer, and what I've done on my computer, is we do have an optional download app that can make the drives connected to your Pogo Plug look like a local drive. Wow. So if you want to load some software, you can make these drives look like a local drive come on automatically. Okay, so Jeff, that brings up the immediate question, what operating systems are supported? Uh, yeah, so um, both, you know, we're uh, Linux, Mac, and PC, um, and all the popular browsers. So it, it's, it's, it's very much agnostic. And so it, the, it's, this it's, plugin is actually compatible with Linux, Mac, or PC? Is that right? Correct. Wow. That's right. Is that read only as far as the plugin goes, or is that, does that allow us to place files on the uh, Pogo plug as well? No, that's exactly what it does. It allows you to place file. It's read and write. So you can drag and drop batch or multiple files uh, within your. Uh, you know, Windows Explorer or Mac Finder like you normally would. Okay. Through the Internet or just through your local local network? Uh, both. Wow. Okay, so this is, this is you, we're putting a whole new spin on this and saying, okay, well, not only does this give us easy access to our files, but it also gives us an off-site backup solution potentially. It gives us the ability That's to right. plug this in at the office or maybe at mom and dad's house and, you know, leave it running in a corner somewhere and it gives us a place to save our stuff. Is that, yeah, that's, that's right. kind of I mean, what I'm following? That, that's, that's one of the, you know, the product is very broad. Um, it, there's lots of features that may be more compelling to different users. Exactly what you described is the, the most normal use case. Uh, you get into then how you can share the content selectively with others. So um, at a folder level or a file level, if you like, mm -hmm. uh, you can then selectively open up that single folder or that single piece of content to people outside of your home. So right. you do that within a browser interface, within okay. our uh, simplified network browser interface, whatever browser you're on, uh, you just go to that piece of content, whether it's a folder or a file, and you type in an address of someone you want to share with, and you send that address, you, you just hit invite. Yeah. They're going to get an invite in their email box, and in that invite is a link that will give them a link to that access that content. Okay, and then so you decide. So, so we can selectively choose who has access to the content, and from right. from a broader spectrum, how secure is it as far as our data goes? Like, how do we have to worry when we plug this thing into the wall that all of a sudden millions of users have access to our data? No, 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 not at all. So um, we actually the we never take the actual files and upload them on the cloud. Okay. okay, so first of all, so files are always physically on your external hard drives at your house. When you open up sharing, you have only opened up sharing to that one specific user generated by that one specific email that you've sent out. Um, you then give them permissions, whether they can just view and download what you've opened up to them, or whether they can also upload. And the uploading's cool because if you're passing things back and forth, they could be creating their own subfolder with the folder that you've given them access. But there's no oh. way for them to get outside of that folder level or whatever that access permission that So they have granted. read and write permission on that folder? If you, you're actually, you have two levels of permissions and you control those two things. So either they can wow. just view or they can actually upload as well. So all the graphic designers out there, are you thinking what I'm thinking where here's a way that you can share uh, access to a device, a storage device for, uh, for your clients. Uh, if you want to be able to share uh, large files, you've got a whole bunch of, uh, let's say, PSD files that you've been working on for a client. You want them to be able to download them, but they're 200 megs each. It sounds like here's a chance for them to read and write data back and forth. So it, it transcends the home user and into business spectrum. And like, is that kind of... 
it's it's a potential for it's a pretty vast uh, product, more so than that. That's, that's that's exactly it. We do think it spans all the way from you know not corporate level, but I would definitely sm- right. say small to medium. Well, small business. medium business, of course. Lots of home home businesses are doing graphic design or web design things like that. Definitely. That's right. We do things. We do things from uh, within the browser interface. We actually do things so that we're. It's not just a file download, but of course, it is great for large file transfer. But mm-hmm. for videos, photos, and music, we actually stream. So um, we we had already been streaming and doing automatic slideshows for photos. Wow. And not only, you know, if we talk about what for a creative professional, something that I like to mention because. You know, being a marketing person, I, I share a lot of files with advertisers and things, and yeah. um, we convert everything within the browser visual in, interface to a JPEG. So let's say you're uploading a PNG file and your client's on a PC and can't see that. Within the browser interface, they would actually see it because we're showing it as a JPEG. So, so you're talking about some those who are still using Internet Explorer. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just install <laughs> Firefox. That'll solve that.